So today I'm going to erect an Edison wall, three tiles wide by two tiles high. These couplers have socket head screws, and the socket head screws is you don't have to figure out exactly where to start the screw to get the coupler to line up when you're done tightening. Line up the coupler any place you want and then just tighten it down. And the coupler that uses hex head bolts, you have to spin the coupler because the hex head bolt doesn't spin within the coupler. For this, you can just line up the coupler and tighten it down. Edison's are normally numbered top to bottom, left to right. So with 3 by 2, we're going to number 1. Two, three, four, five, six. So we'll hang the center one first, and that's going to be one, two, number three. We're going to pull out number three. We'll put uh, some cheese bros on that. These two cheese bros are hex head. Just happened to be what I grabbed. So I don't know if you can get a close up in here. See how the hex doesn't rotate? So that means as we spin this on to the coupler, it's going to end up perhaps in the wrong place, and I'll show you how we adjust that. These don't have to be especially tight um, on there because they can't move once it's up on the truss. The coupler cannot spin in the Edison and the cheese row can't spin on the pipe. So, number three is ready. We're going to pull it out. It weighs about 25 pounds. So these are some five foot pieces of two inch tubing. A couple of standard swivel clamps. Number one. So cheese bros should snug right up against each other. Halfway there. And slide out number two. Grab the handle here. Line those up. Get the bolt in. Okay, so I move the camera over to the back, put this one in, two bolts, handle number six, I have the chrome handle here, put my thumb there, slide my bolt or my 
pin in there. Switch hands. Same thing on this side. But notice I have to pull it forward or back a little bit to get that bolt in. Uh, that's why we don't pin them together just yet. The nice thing about the Edison, it has a built-in little shelf right here. It's handy for setting things on. Now, like I said, I've got some custom truss pin kind of things coming. Stevis pins is what they're actually called. Which, uh, instead of putting nuts on the back of this, we'd put cotter pins in through the Stevis pin. Okay, we'll, we'll see if it feeds assembly well after I get them in. So, there's all of them hung. Now, notice these swing back and forth. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a bolt to pull them together and keep them from swinging back and forth. These then slide through those holes. down and just under tighten them. There'll be a little bit of tension on them because the candles will try to come back apart. I'll have to go get a wrench to get those to tighten down. Between those we should be able to snug these down. So basically what I've done is I've tightened this down until this gap between the two is even all the way up and down. Interestingly enough I pulled these together to where they're even now also. There we go. One solid wall of Edison's. Three short one foot DMX jumpers. Three PowerCon to PowerCon jumpers. A little bit tight, but to get the six inch spacing on the lamps, that's the best I could do. Ten foot DMX cables. And it back up to three. I use ten foot cables in my kit because quite often this is a three foot high by six foot or three tile high by six tile wide. And then we need a terminator on that last one. Okay, so I couldn't find a terminator. I do have my power cords. Power cons. Particular cables are power con to parallel blade, but I have them that are twist lock. I have them that go directly to a sock pack. So that took 45 minutes to set it up, circuit it, plug it all in. Ta-da! This is a little box, custom software that all it does is a pinwheel. So, that's our uh, complete. It's now 205. Took one hour. One hour, including lamping and everything, all circuited, ready to go.